in Lakota culture, we have a ceremony that's called Uipi. And this is a ceremony that can only be done by Uipi men. Let me give you a little history on that so you know what it's about. There's an old, old story that talks about the character in our story by the name of Iktomi. And before he was Iktomi, he was somebody else. And he was a very, very wise person. However, there's something about his appearance that's kind of funny. Let me say this first. He was a counselor to this organization called Wakantanka. Uh, Wakantanka is not God. It's not Jesus Christ. It's not the Creator. It's not Tungashila. When people talk like that, that's a Christian way of thinking. What I'm talking about is information that existed long time ago, and this is called Lakota Star Knowledge. In these stories, it explains how things developed in the universe, our solar system, our galaxy and our solar system, and our Earth. And it goes further to each one of us. But everything is reflecting a sacred event that happened in the beginning of this universe. And that is reality begins within. And during this time when the Earth was new and we come on the Earth from under the ground, we're brought as a different form from the center of the universe. And then were placed under the earth. Then the Wakantanka organization do something to these forms, and from that come a nation called Kte Oyate. This is not buffalo people. In our stories, it talks about this person. He was considered very wise, and the Wakantanka organization asked him for advice all the time. For thousands of years, this is the way the situation was. But the thing is, he kind of looks funny. He has a funny walk. And so when he would come to their meetings, he walks funny. So they laugh in the beginning, but then they apologize. And they don't mean anything mean. And they're really immature. You have to remember, this is the creation. This is the beginning of the earth. So nothing is perfect. Nothing was meant to be perfect. Perfection is an illusion. It's an unhealthy concept because it creates unrealistic expectations. So you have members of the Wakantaka that's showing that they're not perfect, that they're growing, they're learning too. There is no such thing as perfection. It's not meant to be that way. Perfection indicates an end, and there is no end. There's always beginnings, but no end. So this guy... This wise person, he decides to play a trick on the Wakantanka organization, and it backfires. It really backfires. And as a result, he's changed from this wise person to what he's known as today, which is Ichitomi. Now, I'm telling you a very fast version of the story. The story is actually longer. It has a lot of drama in there. And because of this incident, we develop the male cycle and the female cycle. Our language changes in which women end their sentences one way and men end their sentences another way, even though it's the same language. There is no female version of our language. It's just the sentence endings and a few words. Other than that, it's the same language. That all happened because of this incident. Anyway, so... After that, he became known as the trickster. His name is Iktomi, which means spider. So, from then on, he goes around and he tries to trick people. And if you are not on guard, meaning if you're not living a healthy life, he can trick you. Because he can appear to be really nice, friendly, good-looking, promising you this, promising you that. And then he does his trick. The stories can be funny, they can be incredibly vicious. Star Knowledge says you're supposed to only tell Ichitomi stories when the spiders go under the ground. That's during very winter time, blizzard time. But anyway, 
Iktomi is always playing tricks. Yeah, he's always tricking people. And finally, it gets to the point where he's coming, walking down the road, and animals see him, and they're like, uh, here comes Iktomi, get away. Yeah, everybody takes off. Yeah? And wherever he goes, people take off, because they know he's going to try to trick them. So he gets to the point where he's like, gee. <laughs> so he says, well, today I'm going to do the ultimate trick. He said, I'm going to trick myself. <laughs> See, this is Iktomi thinking. Yeah? <laughs> I'm going to trick myself. He's all proud, he says that. So then he proceeds to think, how am I going to trick myself? Hmm. <laughs> oh, man. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, <laughs> who says that, yeah? <laughs> I'm going to trick myself. <laughs> Oh, that's a funny guy, but he's also dangerous too, yeah? But the thing is, the whole point is how he thinks. He's teaching you something. And he's teaching you, if you understand his way of thinking, if you can pick up on that, you're going to realize he's one of the greatest teachers ever. Unhealthy people, right away they classify him as He's the bad guy. Some people are saying that he's Satan, that he's the devil. No, he's not. Because remember, we don't have good versus evil in our culture. That does not exist. So, he's not an evil guy. You can't look at it with dualistic eyes. You have to look at it from a Lakota perspective. Duality is when you see everything in only two groups. And you say, I like this one. So that's good. And then everything else that's different, you say that's bad. And everything is focused on that. So you see everything in life as only having two components. That's why it's called duo. Duo, duality. Duality comes from the word duo. And duo is Latin for two. And when you only have two, you have the tendency to assign one a good label and the other one a bad label, and that's where you get into trouble. That's when you start thinking that positive is good and negative is bad, and that's not true. This universe is founded upon four elements, and they're not about which one is the best one. It's not like that. These four elements, they just work differently. They don't fight against each other or anything. They just work differently. And this is how the universe is created. So you see, it's not just two. It's more than two. Lakota Star Knowledge says it's going to always be at least three. At least. Most of the times it's four. But at least three. And many times it's more than four. But it's never, 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 ever just two. So duality is when you lose something. Lakota Star Nala says there's at least three components to reality. And duality, there's only two. Well, that means you're missing something. That means when you're dualistic, when you're a racist, when you say your way is the only way, when you say your religion is the only religion, when you say your race is the best race, the chosen race, when you talk like that, you're dualistic. And since you only see two components to reality, that means you do not see the complete reality. And this is the problem of today. Duality. That's the main problem. And in duality, we don't take the time to check things out. We just judge it right away. 
we look at something or somebody and we say, oh, I don't like that. So that's evil. It must be destroyed. <laughs> uh, my favorite line from that movie called Steel Magnolias. <laughs> you are evil. It must be destroyed. <laughs> As she Anyway, this is the problem that we have today. Duality creates everything that's problematic for everything, actually. It's not just for humans. It's also the problem for plants and animals and that which moves and grows because all creation is connected. But today, most Lakota people see things in dualistic eyes, so they don't really understand who he is. So this makes it easier for him. You see what I mean? <laughs> so anyway, Iktomi decided to trick himself. And what do you think he's going to do? What do you think he's going to do? How is he going to trick himself? We'll see if we can figure that out. He went to a man and he appeared as a spider to this man. And as a spider, he said, I'm giving you power to help the people. This power is going to help you to cure certain diseases. And it's also going to help people find things, including themselves. But he said to this man, every time you do a ceremony to help people, some of this power goes away. Then eventually it's going to be all gone. But you have it, he said. You have power. You have some of my power, he said. And you can use it to help people. So then he proceeded to show this man how to do this ceremony. And this ceremony is what today is called Uipi. Now I'm not going to go into detail on that ceremony because it's a sacred thing. But I'll tell you some of the things that happen as a result. It's really interesting information. It's amazing what can happen. But there's a concept that you have to know first before I can continue. And this concept is called tu. It's a guttural sound in there. That's a T. I read it with a dot over it. Tu. Tu is a spiritual essence that's connected to you. So like, for example, it's in your clothes. It's in the things you make with your hands, like food or items. Maybe you're working woodwork. Part of your energy goes in there. So we're very careful on where we leave things. If you just leave your jacket all over the place, an unhealthy energy could touch it. And your tool is in that jacket. And no matter what, it's still connected to you. No matter how far away that jacket is from you, it's still connected to you through tun. So if an unhealthy energy touches that jacket, it travels through that tun connection and gets to you and it could make you sick. Tun. It's in your hair as well. So that's why you're supposed to be really careful when you travel someplace and how you dispose your hair. It's in your shit. It's in your toenails, your fingernails. So when you're cutting your fingernails, you kind of have to be careful on that. Because if something unhealthy gets on it, it could make you sick. And this affects babies more because they're new. Like young ladies in the 1970s, they just buy pampers for their babies. And when they're traveling someplace and they change their babies, pampers, they just throw the pamper out while the car's driving. They throw it in the ditch. And old old grandmas really get nervous when that happens. They say, be prepared to stay up all night because you're not supposed to do what you just did. And of course, these young ladies, they don't believe in that. But sure enough, that night, the baby cries throughout the night. It's restless. Because a coyote probably walked by their baby's pampers. See, there's something about coyotes and wolves. They have two in their hair that all they have to do is walk beside our two, and when it mixes, something not too good happens. 
And this again is also explained in another story. That's really another interesting story, how that happened. Why is this this way? And that story has to do with when we first came on the earth. First, we were under the earth as Pte Oyate. That's not buffalo people. That They're human in form, but they're not human. When they come on the earth, that's when they transform into humans. And at that time, they were tricked to come by, guess who? Iktomi, yeah? At the same time, the wolves couldn't find any food. So Iktomi couldn't find any friends. So he said to the wolves, if you be my friends forever, he said, I can bring you a food. So the wolves reluctantly agreed. Yeah, they were facing starvation. Iktomi told the wolves, these people, their blood tastes really good. He said, and when you get a taste of it, you're going to want more. So he was tempting the wolves. So he set this all up so when we came out on the surface of the earth, we were surrounded by wolves. And the wolves went to work. They attacked us in great numbers. And most of us were annihilated by the wolves. And just a little bit of us were left and we escaped. You see, Iktomi set all that up. So because of that exchange, that traumatic incident that happened, this is why wolves are considered an enemy. Then we got in trouble on the earth. Then the rest of the Pte Oyate came on the earth. And when they came on, they transformed into buffalo people. This is why Lakota people consider buffalo people their closest relatives because we both evolved from the same being. Buffalo people, they're not called Pte Oyate, they're called Ptechchaka Oyate. A buffalo is Ptechchaka. Tatanka is a buffalo bull. It's not buffalo, it's the bull. And we were called Ikche Oyate. So this is why we're considered close. And so whatever happens to the buffalo happens to us and vice versa. So buffalo and wolves, natural enemies. And whoever is an enemy to the buffalo is also an enemy to us. I'm telling you a really fast version here yeah, for the sake of time. I'm really telling you a fast version of the story. So anyway, because of this, this is why we have to be careful where we leave our hair, where we leave our clothes. We have to watch out for that because coyotes are part of this deal too. If a wolf or a coyote walks beside it, it causes harm and it could influence something unhealthy to happen to us. So you really have to be careful with this tone, with your belongings and stuff like that. But likewise, there's a really nice element to this too. Like if you have a best friend or somebody who's special to you, then that person is going to move away. You give them something that belongs to you, and this shows that person that you trust that person. And that means there will still be a connection. Even though you're far away from each other, that person has some of your tone. And you're trusting that person with it. And so that person will then give you something from him or her so that you have that person's tone as well. Because you trust each other. You earn that from each other. So you, in a way, you still have each other even though you're thousands of miles away. You see what I mean? That's a really nice aspect of that. And when people in the hunka spiritually adopt one another, they also do this too, exchange clothes, because they trust each other. So that's hung. Okay, so you have to understand that before I go into this weepy discussion. That's why I'm talking about that. Okay, so hung, something to really be careful about that you don't just leave your belongings all over the place because when you do, something could go wrong with you. Now I come back to this Iwipi ceremony. Like I said, I'm not going to talk about the ceremony, but I'm just going to focus on the results because the ceremony is sacred. Let me say some of the reasons first why people do this. Some reasons could be somebody has a disease and this is a way to treat them their physical ailment, and to cure them, but then that person has to still do things. The patient still has to do things. He has to live in such a way that the cure stays in effect. In other words, 
So you go to some person and you get healed, then that doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. You still have to maintain it. So otherwise, it might come back and it might be worse. So you have to maintain it. You have to embrace it. You have to make it a part of your lifestyle in that maintenance of it, maintaining the cure. That's what we learn concerning healing. Okay, so that's one reason. Another reason could be somebody's lost. They don't know where they are at. Now what you could do is you find a Yuwipi man. You have to opahi. This is giving traditional tobacco to the Yuwipi man and then ask him the question. That's a formal thing. And then it's up to him whether he's going to decide to help you or not. Now let's say he decides to help you. Let's say you lost your grandma. Maybe you never even met your grandma. Maybe your grandma disappeared before you were even born. You never knew what happened to her. Even your mom. Let's say that's her mother. And let's say the mom was a baby when this lady disappeared. So she never even knew her mother. But nobody ever found her. They never knew what happened to her. So now let's say you want to find this lady. So you go to a weepy man and you opahi him. You give him some tobacco and you ask him the question, I want to find my grandma. My mom never met her. You talk about your situation. So let's say the uh, weepy man agrees. So he tells you what to do to prepare, what items to do. And they set up a location where they're going to do it. And then they proceed. Now, during the ceremony, See, you have to bring something that belonged to that person who's missing. In this case, let's say they still have a dress from this woman. So they bring the dress to the Uyuti man, and they do the ceremony. And when they do the ceremony, they look at this. When I say they, I'm talking about the Uyuti man and his helpers. The helpers are not human. Let me just say it like that. These beings, they look at this dress and they see something that we cannot see. They see the tomb. Now, they look at it, then they look around. See, to them, space and time is not the same like it is for us. Us humans, we associate three dimensions. But these beings, they don't. So they can see it. Don't matter where it's at. It doesn't matter how far it is. They see it. They see where it's located. And then they hone in on it and describe the location. And if it's inside something, they're going to say what it's inside. And then they tell the uh, Uwipi man where it's at. And they're going to describe the location. They're going to say, there's a tree there and where this lady is located is is on the north side of the tree. And they're going to describe the whole area, what it looks like, and how far away it is, what direction. And so they end the ceremony, and they always bring food in the ceremony. And they put it in the middle. And it's like a feast. You have to provide a feast. And then these beings that are there, that see the tomb, they take the tru from the food and then they leave. And then after that, everybody else can eat the food. And the food has to be consumed. In other words, you can't take leftovers. You have to be there and get full. <laughs> you can't take leftovers home. And the Uweepi man is going to be the last one. So he feeds everybody. Here, have some more, have some more. And <laughs> he's going to try to make you have thirds and fourths, yeah? Because, see, the reason why is whatever food is left over, he has to eat it. And he can't leave that location until he's eaten it all. <laughs> so, so, really, you know, good, you weepy men are really big, yeah? <laughs> Ha, <laughs>
And so after that, it's over, and then he tells the person where to go to locate it. So let's say you go over there, and sure enough, they get permission from the landowner, and they say maybe there's something there that, according to your family history or something, and they're there to witness it too. So people dig there, and sure enough, they pull up a skeleton. They found the body. See, something like that happens through the ceremony. Now, it's like I said, I'm not going to tell what happened because uh, that's sacred information, what they were doing inside during the time of the ceremony itself. Now, that ceremony that I just described to you was classified by the priests as from Satan. Because dualistic people will say things like, well, yeah, the devil will help you, but he's doing that to trick you. But once he has you, then he's going to double-cross you. Don't think so, folks, because Satan is an illusion, and so is God. These are ideas that were created by man to subdue others, to control them. And this has always been that way in a dualistic society. And whatever they don't understand, they don't try to understand it, and they're quick to judge it. If they don't agree with it, immediately they say, this is coming from the devil. This is not right, so therefore, this is evil. That is how a dualistic world works. Even today, there's a lot of Indians that are very, very Christian-influenced that they don't want to talk about these things because they're going to say that's really the devil doing that. It just goes to show you how effective the Christian brainwashing has been among our people to the point where they become incredibly scared of these things. And actually, it's a beautiful thing. And this all happened in a story in which Iktomi said, I'm going to trick myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's an off guy, yeah. <laughs> but look at what we got, yeah. Look at the ceremony that we got from that. This ceremony is older than the sun dance. This ceremony is older than lots of the other ceremonies. This is mega ancient when we're talking about that. There are some places in Lakota country where it is still done. And there are still weepy people. The way men become this is they're called by Ktomi. It's a type of healer. And you know what? These are the only people that have power to do these ceremonies. When you're talking about holy people, holy people are called by these beings that we don't see. But they are there because we see the effects. We hear the effects of what happens. And some people can see them, but only because they let you. Animals see them as well. And these beings choose who the holy people are. In other words, you don't decide. You know, This is not like a profession where you can say, Ooh, I'm going to go to Holy Man University and major in Holy Man and take a shamanistic course, and it doesn't work like that. That's ridiculous to think like that, to think that you can learn this in a course. This is dualistic thinking. This is ridiculous. So, it's a really beautiful thing. As I said, it is scary, but when you have knowledge of it, then it's not scary. As you're participating in such a ceremony, you just go in with an open mind, and you have knowledge. It's important to have the knowledge. And whatever happens, happens. You go with the experience as it's happening, and then you're becoming a part of the experience when you do that. You don't even think about being scared. You realize that your attendance is actually a part of the ceremony too. And you might even get an answer. The ceremony is for everybody, actually, yeah, because sometimes people in attendance, they might even get an answer to something they were thinking about that they never even told anybody. They might actually receive an answer there. So it's actually a beautiful thing. I just think the priest said that this was from the devil. Like I said, if you don't 
know what's going on. And if you believe in good versus evil, this ceremony is going to scare the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah? So you have to really have the correct mindset. When you look at it from a star knowledge perspective, as it's happening, like I said, you just take it in as it's happening and you realize it's really a wonderful thing that's going on. And when it's over, it is a cause to celebrate. It is a cause for rejoicing. That's why they bring a lot of food, to have a good time afterwards. Because there was something fantastic just happened. So you weepy men... They receive this power from Itgomi, and every time they do a ceremony, some of that power leaves, because that power is making the ceremony happen. And eventually they run out. Then they're done. Yeah, they don't have to do that anymore. In other situations, when you're talking about holy people, holy people are chosen by these sacred beings that also are working in the Yuwipi ceremony. These beings choose holy people. In other words, you can't just be one because you want to be one. You can't do a sun dance or a humblecha to be one. They choose you. And then they teach you after that. Or you receive instruction from another more experienced holy person. And they have no power whatsoever. Yeah? They have absolutely no power. It's these beings that work through the holy person. But they actually have no power. Whereas with Uweepi men, it's Iktomi who gives power to the Uweepi men. Now, let me explain medicine men. Okay, medicine men, what they do is they work with plants, herbs. They know the songs to use and sing in preparation and administration of those potions or cures to people who are sick. That's the extent of their calling. And other medicine men can choose younger ones because they're going to see that there's something about somebody that has what it takes to be a medicine man. So they will choose and then they teach that person. They teach them what plants to use and what songs to sing with the plant and things like that. That's the extent of their work, but it is a great work. Holy people commune with the holy beings in the sacred Lakota language. And the sacred beings choose holy people. And what they do is they're like a glove. And the sacred beings are wearing the glove and doing the work. So it's not the holy people that are doing the cure. They're just the way to get it done. But who's really doing the cure are these sacred beings. That's the difference there. A holy person can change the ceremony according to the situation. Medicine people can't do that. So there are differences. Now, a holy person can be a medicine man too, but it doesn't work the other way. Now, concerning women, they can do this, but only after menopause. They have to go through menopause first. See, there's an old Lakota star knowledge story that explains this, and I kind of covered that. It's how Iktomi came to be. Yeah, he used to be somebody before. Remember what I was saying earlier? One of the outcomes of that story establishes that women receive three gifts, and they receive it within their bodies. It's within their bodies, and men don't have that. So this elevated women above men. And that's the way it was for thousands of years. And then men were given three ceremonies to bring ourselves back into balance with women. And so for that reason, only men are supposed to do those three ceremonies. Women already have it. It's in their bodies. It's in their development. So women have three more stages of development than men do. So as a result, we have to do things to maintain the balance between man and woman, male and female. Now women can be called too for sacred people and medicine people. They can be called for those two, but they can't do the work until after they go through menopause. 
Because if they do it before that, it offsets the balance between male and female energies. So this is the reason why. So there are holy women. Some of my teachers were holy women. And this is what I learned from them, is that they couldn't do their work until they went through menopause. Some of them received their spiritual education while they were still in their menstruating years, but they couldn't do ceremonies until they were done menstruating, until they went through menopause. But Uipi only applies to men. It's not because men are better. It had absolutely nothing to do with that. When people think, well, it's because men think they can do anything. This is dualistic thinking. You have to remember, when you look at our culture, you have to look at it through our perspective, not yours. If you're not Lakota, you have to look at it through our perspective, meaning you also have to know these stories that explain to you why it's that way. Then when you do, you receive the understanding. Then it makes sense. Just because men are the only ones that can be Uweepi people, it does not mean they're better. It absolutely does not mean that. You always have to learn the full story, the full versions. And unfortunately, thanks to that Christianity brainwashing that we experience, most of us today don't know that. So that's why we're quick to judge. Yeah? We say, well, shit, if a man can do it, then a woman can do it too. That's not Lakota thinking. That's Western thinking. That's dualistic thinking. Because if you think like that, you have to apply that to the man too. Men should be able to say that too. If a woman is saying, well, if a man can do it, then I can do it too. That's not entirely true. It can only be true if the statement is true for men too. And it isn't. We cannot get pregnant. We cannot have babies. Until that happens, that statement will never be true. That's coming from star knowledge, believe it or not. I had a grandmother who said that. She was talking about these three ceremonies uh, that I mentioned earlier. And she said, women are not supposed to be doing that. She said, if a woman does those ceremonies, that's the day that a man should be able to get pregnant and have a baby. She's coming from a star knowledge point of view. And I met another lady, she was a Lakota language teacher as well. And her grandmother said the same thing too. So it's not just me, I'm not making this up. You have to use that statement to apply to both genders. So when women say, well, if a man can do it, then we can do it too. You have to turn that around. And if it's true, then okay, then it's true. But when you turn it around... And a man says, well, if a woman can have a baby, then a man should be able to too, which is not possible. (laughs) So therefore, that statement is moot. Yeah, It's not working. And that's the Lakota Star Knowledge perspective. You have to know our perspective, which means you have to understand that our way of looking at things is different. And if you continue to look at it through dualistic eyes, then you are really... Missing it. Mitaku FB, that's the way it is. Hetchetuelo. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this video. I really, really appreciate it. And if you would like to send a special thanks in support of this channel, look at the bottom of this video where the title is, and right under that, where it says like, dislike, and share, right in that area, slide it towards the left, and you will see the symbols change, and then you will see a heart-shaped button that says thanks on it. If you would like to click on there to send your thanks of support, I would really appreciate it, as I really do enjoy making these videos and speaking with you and spending some time with you. So again, thank you very much for listening. To learn more about Lakota spirituality, I have written a book called Wichocha Otehike, 
This book also includes Lakota star knowledge information. All the videos that I make, which are about Lakota spirituality, Lakota star knowledge, and cultural information, are based on this book. This book costs 99 American dollars. This price includes the shipping cost as well as a tracking number. And to learn more about Lakota language, I have written a Lakota language book called Chante et Owoglake, Speaking from the Heart. And all my Lakota language videos are based on this book. This book costs 119 American dollars. This price includes the shipping cost as well as a tracking number. I also teach online and I give spiritual consultations as well. If you are interested in any of my services and products, you can send payment via PayPal to my email address, which is hechaka7 at yahoo.com. That's H E H A K A, the number seven, at yahoo.com. When you send your payment, please include your shipping address and your email address. Ho, oh, Lila Pilamaelo. Thank you very much. In the Lakota way, everything is circular. As a result, we do not have a word for goodbye in the Lakota language. And so instead we say until next time, which in Lakota is Doksha Ake. And I will catch you in the next video.